it's still a very long road ahead, even for those who made the cut for tonight's main stage debate. Debate that is, while Trump keeps his hold on the top spot, mid-tier candidates are doing what they can to make a splash heading into the early voting primaries. I want to bring in one America's Ryan Hofel, who joins us in studio with analysis of two candidates looking for their big bump in the polls tonight. Ryan. Thanks, Mike. So uh, we have a lot to cover today. Well, and as Ash told you about the top two presidential hopefuls earlier, but for those not named Trump or Cruz, the time is now to start making moves heading into those key February primaries. Now, two in particular, Marco Rubio and Ben Carson, and both have enjoyed their time in the spotlight earlier in the race, but are now looking on the outside looking in. And according to our latest OAN polls, Rubio is sitting at 11% nationally, while Carson is right behind him at 5%. And Rubio's biggest moment tonight might have been when he discussed the likely Democratic nominee. Take a listen. It wouldn't just be a disaster. Hillary Clinton is disqualified from being commander in chief of the United States. Someone, someone who cannot handle intelligence information appropriately cannot be commander in chief. And someone who lies to the families of those four victims in Benghazi can never be president of the United States. The Rubio camp will be looking for more of this as they look to go toe to toe with the bigger names who are higher up in the polls. Uh, Ryan, just over two weeks out, we are already starting uh, to see a few interesting primary storylines forming right now. Do you think either of these candidates have a real shot at taking home the GOP nomination? You know, well, Mike, it, it might be hard to imagine right now anybody else other than Donald Trump at the top spot right now, but don't rule out any other candidates until after the primaries are said and done. You know, I can see Rubio's camp. You know, they may be setting up for the long haul since he hasn't spent too much time in New Hampshire or Iowa. And uh, Carson, on the other hand, may be looking to go a little bit more all in to borrow a poker term because uh, he wants to push all his chips in the middle of the table in February because he's hoping to steal some of those headlines in the key early voting states. Though with a new staff in place, uh, he may choose to play it safe after just taking the wheel of the retired neurosurgeon's campaign. And we know some other big news earlier in the week was the State of the Union address, of course, on Tuesday, and maybe even more importantly for the GOP side, the Republican response. Now, Ryan, how did Governor Nikki Haley, South Carolina governor, words make their way into tonight's debate? And well, Mike, Governor Haley was handpicked by new House Speaker Paul Ryan to give that Republican address as the party looks for a positive voice heading into this important election year. She said Americans have the chance to change the direction America is heading after seven years of failed White House policies that have hurt Americans across the board. Take a listen. Many Americans are still feeling the squeeze of an economy too weak to raise income levels. We're feeling a crushing national debt a health care plan that has made insurance less affordable and doctors less available, and chaotic unrest in many of our cities. Now I want you to compare that to what Senator Ted Cruz had to say about the White House's fiscal policies. Like Haley, he painted a much darker image of the state of the U.S. economy than the president did during the State of the Union address. Take a listen. The president tried to paint a rosy picture of jobs. And you know, he's right. If you're a Washington lobbyist, if you make your money in and around Washington, things are doing great. The millionaires and billionaires are doing great under Obama, but we have the lowest percentage of Americans working today of any year since 1977. Median wages have stagnated, and the Obama-Clinton economy has left behind the working men and women of this country. The reason all of us are here is we believe we should be fighting for the working men and women of this country and not Washington, D.C. And we'll just have to wait and see if Governor Haley's overall message will continue to resonate throughout the 2016 race. All right, Ryan, let's stick with uh, Governor Haley real quickly. Something interesting regarding Governor Haley. Many on Capitol Hill are bringing her name up as the possible VP nominee. Ryan, who do you think is the most likely candidate to pick Governor Haley as their 2016 2016 running mate? You know, Mike, Governor Haley is widely regarded as a rising star in the GOP right now, and it would be a very good addition to any Republican ticket. You know, right now, a Rubio-Haley ticket would look really good to establishment Republicans, 
But if Cruz were to win the nod, I could see uh, the appeal of a Cruz Haley one two punch. Cruz is a strong conservative voice and Haley's softer touch could help their message resonate well with voters still on the fence heading into that general election. All right, one American News political correspondent Ryan Hofel, great job. Stay here throughout the night because we will be checking back.